Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the official of the for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the Turkish and American national anthems and the invocation. God-giver of power and of authority, as the guidon has passed on to Lieutenant Colonel Scott Wilson, we ask for your divine guidance for the 39th Comms Water and all of the people who make this mission possible. We acknowledge before you how vital it is to human life to be able to communicate to one another. We remember and lift up Lieutenant Colonel Ari as he transitions to the Aloha State, and we are grateful for his leadership. But now, as Lieutenant Colonel Wilson leads his dominators to continued and upward success, we pray for you to endow him with wisdom and effective leadership. For the friends, family, and unit members present here today and all over the world, we vow to be united in solidarity with one mission, to support Lieutenant Colonel Wilson in thought, word, and deed. May Team Titan continue to move forward with the sacred trust and power you have delegated and to rest in the strength of your outstretched arms. In your holy name I pray. today's ceremony, there are several distinguished, distinguished guests who have joined us today, and we would like to take a moment to recognize them. Commander, 39th Air Force Wing, Colonel Randy P. Oakland. <laughs> Vice Commander, 39th Air Base Wing, Colonel Shelley Mendieta. <laughs> Commander, 
Command Chief, 39th Air Base Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Michael Roxbury. In addition, we are very pleased to extend a warm welcome to the family and friends of Lieutenant Colonel Wilson, all group and squadron commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, the 39th Communication Squadron, and community members that have joined us for today's event. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to, inter to introduce to you our presiding officer for today's ceremony, commander of the 39th Mission Support Group, Colonel Robert Long. Good afternoon. So, thanks for bearing with me while I de-COVID. I tried to just do my, my speech up on stage the last one we did for the LRS last week, and I was nervous and I was not falling off, so I'm not as eloquent and coordinated as Colonel Oakland, so I'm gonna come over here and do it this way. Uh, but again, I wanna say thank you for everyone coming out today. This is an amazing event uh, on a beautiful day here in Turkey. Uh, so, sir, thank you for joining. Colonel Mendea, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, and then to all the, the dominators and communicators who are both in the room and who are watching online uh, at a later time, but I want to recognize you as well. So uh, thank you for being here. I uh, appreciate everyone dialing in. Uh, and then to friends and family of Colonel Wilson uh, who will undoubtedly be watching this later on. Um, first, I also want to take a moment to thank everyone who set this up. Right? There's a lot of effort that goes into each one, every one of these events. Uh, so it doesn't just happen. Uh, so I definitely want to say thank you all the way from the protocol to the communicators who are excited to do it finally for their own squadron, uh, you know, to the chapel, to the protocol, uh, the club staff, everyone had a part in this. So I definitely thank you for, for what you did to make this uh, ceremony today. Uh, truly an honor for me to be here. This is exciting. Uh, you know, when we picked our commanders about eight months ago, you never know if you actually need to be here to welcome them and do the ceremony because we're, as everyone knows, you know, short time here. Uh, so this is an exciting moment to be here. So. Um, happy for that. Uh, and normally at command ch changeovers, uh, we hold the, the event to say goodbye to our outgoing commander uh, and welcome the new commander. Uh, kind of interesting to see here, kind of the, the, new, the new Titan norm is that we do more assumptions than changes. Uh, so I'm excited that you get to carry on this tradition of assumptions uh, here for this. So starting out good, at least in the MSG. I won't speak for the other groups. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so I'd like to say to Lieutenant Colonel Ari, who I know will eventually come back and dial into this and watch it on Facebook. Uh, right now he's probably about 35,000 feet over probably Mississippi about now, uh, heading westbound. Uh, so he can't actually do that unless he paid for Wi-Fi. And I think you know JP, he wouldn't do that, right? So, um, but uh, I want to thank JP for his leadership over the last year. Uh, this was a hugely important year, not only for the Air Force, for the wing, but even for the comms squadron, right? It, it was a massive effort on multiple fronts. Uh, so many barriers, so many obstacles throughout the year that we had to overcome. From immediate, when we got here, you know, Colonel Ari and the team was working to try and fight the email latency that seemed to plague the entire Air Force. Uh, and then we found the solution for it here. Uh, some outside assistance, but our communicators were the ones running that show, and that was pretty awesome to see. To then a massive flood that threatened to flood the entire comm squadron, and the giant DSN switchboard, who I swear, they tell me no, but I swear Alexander Graham Bell made that thing. So there's no way we're replacing that if it got wet and flooded. Uh, but through teamwork, we're able to, to sand barricade the, the building and, and pump out all the water and save that amazing piece of equipment. Uh, and then the wing COVID response. Right? We talk about <clears throat> excuse me. We talk about how the wing was able to thrive and still execute through COVID in a, a much different scenario. And who made that happen? All the communicators and dominators in the comm squadron providing that capability to our wing. So a huge battle to overcome there. Uh, so again, very important, not even for this wing, but also our GSUs who are trying to do the same thing uh, and requiring the, the reach back help that we provided here. Um, and I, I, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say all of the, the email and share drive outages that inevitably happen Friday afternoon and Saturday morning that drive everyone in the conference partner to, to start focusing on the current problem for the weekend and react to it. Um, so again, Huge efforts, lots of barriers, lots of monumental uh, problems to overcome. Uh, so I, I appreciate all the leadership JP provided the squadron to get through that and all the effort that all the, the men and women of the comm squadron did to get there. Uh, so, so JP, thank you for leading them through it. Uh, and there's countless other challenges, but I won't go through them. Uh, so I was told I only have 3.9 hours to talk today. Um, so now on to Colonel Wilson. 
to all you communicators out there, I'm excited for you. Right? You're getting an amazing leader that is going to help lead you to the next chapter in the 39th College Water. Uh, he is an outstanding leader with command experience uh, who will continue the pristine level of support this wing has grown accustomed to and that you have set the standard for. His records and his education are amazing. Uh, he started all out being a computer science degree. Uh, if Colonel Hawkins were still here, I'd make some kind of an Arkansas joke right about now, but I'll save for that and we'll, we'll do that later. Uh, he's also Arkansas. Uh, but anyway, uh, first assignment, he was in the comm squadron for four years at McComm. So he had to, to be a deputy flight commander, flight commander, learn the ins and outs of base comm, uh, which is the foundation of, of what the comm squadron does, right? I don't need to tell you all that. That's amazing. To start out learning that immediately is going to be a huge leg up, and he has proven that and taken that to the next level each and every time. Um, so he was also, in that time, in those four years, recognized at multiple number ones across any job and any peer group that he was put up against uh, and won numerous awards. In fact, he did so well, they said, let's get him out of that pool so everybody else can win, and they pulled him up to be a group exec. And then he still kept winning number one strats and, and being recognized with awards. So uh, then they decided, hey, let's ship him overseas. So then he did a nice run of overseas assignments, uh, again, continuing to rack up those strats and, and develop that, that basic calm knowledge, uh, which has, has then uh, helped him so, long, so much throughout the rest of his career. And right about that time, he got his first master's degree. And you heard me correctly, his first master's degree. Uh, and then continued on with his, his comm and cyber training uh, and an assignment uh, with DISA. Uh, so you may or may not have to work a bit with DISA while you're here. They tend to have their fingers all over the, the map here. Uh, and, and then, oh, by the way, still being recognized number one amongst his peers at that point. Except at that point now, it's, it's grown. So now he's getting strats such as one of 84 joint 04s by the DISA three star. So pretty impressive peer group, and he's excelling at that as well. I think you're, you're probably sensing a trend here. Uh, from then, he had a short stint with NSA. Um, we're not allowed to talk about what he did there, uh, but let's just say he was a fantastic director of operations, so prepped him well for being here. Uh, and somehow during that time with NSA, he managed to get that second master's degree from John Hopkins University, kind of a prestigious university, I hear. So it, it, pretty impressive. Again, solid education, solid background, able to learn new tasks. It's going to bode well. It's going to be fantastic for the squadron. Um, and if you remember, uh, I previously mentioned he had previous command experience even. Um, so from the NSA, he went on to be a detachment commander role at Nellis. Uh, and that opportunity gave him a great leadership experience and, of course, continued earning those top strats. Uh, in fact, it was in that role that you worked for the, the 53rd TMG uh, and worked for a good friend of mine, Vader Dempsey who basically gave you glowing reviews uh, and told me I'd be an idiot if I didn't hire you. Uh, so if you know Vader, that's kind of how he passes good stuff. So when you energize that bro network, uh, you get some uh, candid feedback. Uh, so that's how I knew we were making the right decision at that point. Uh, so I can continue to brag about Colonel Wilson. Uh, for the sake of time, I won't. Uh, I'll let him tell you all of his stories because uh, there'll be plenty of time to, to go through those. Uh, however, I hope it is readily apparent to everyone, especially our communicators in the room and uh, on Facebook once we post this video, that the squadron is in great hands for this next year. Uh, I'm excited to hear about all the successes that the team's going to accomplish uh, and all the unforeseen challenges that you're going to dominate uh, over the next year. Um, so I'll leave you with three things uh, that I'd like to challenge uh, incoming leaders with. Uh, one, have trust in your airmen. Uh, two, challenge and push them daily. And three, empower them to do great things. Uh, and I guess number four, have fun. So, uh, but if you keep all that stuff in mind, those items in mind as you're leading daily, uh, I promise you're gonna be amazed at the long list of accomplishments and the accolades that this team will rack up. Uh, and you just get to sit back and document it and, and give them praise and, and report to the boss all the great things that are happening. Uh, so one short year, but you'll be impressed. Uh, with that, uh, again, I want to thank you all for your attention. Uh, tolerating letting me brag on a little bit. I uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, and congratulations. This is an awesome opportunity. We're excited for you. Uh, and I'm glad everyone six feet socially distant is here, here able to witness this great event. Um, so with that, let me say we do this. All right. Thank you. Please rise with the assumption of command.
publish the order. Attention to orders. Department of the Air Force 39th Air Base Wing, Insulik Air Base Turkey, Special Order Number G-20-10. Lieutenant Colonel Scott N. Wilson, by direction of the, pres of the President, is appointed Commander, 39th Communication Squadron, effective 22 June 2020. Signs Colonel Robert F. Long, Commander, 39th Mission Support Group. Center, please. Sir, I assume command.
today's ceremony possible. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for, and remain standing for the playing of the Air Force song at the departure of the official party. This concludes our ceremony for today.